do, guys. Hello, it's Kina from Crafting Mayhem and More. I might as well sneak that on in. Um, note the name change from Miniatures Mayhem and More to Crafting Mayhem and More. I am in the process of updating all of the things <laughs> that I need to update, including establishing new emails as well as Instagram and Twitter, which I don't use, and what else? Uh, that new one. <laughs> I can't remember what it is, but uh, it's the new one where you do the videos. I feel, okay, I'm all lost. Let me look at my phone, because I have all the apps. Twitch. All right, how did I miss that? So updating all of those websites. I have, in addition to that, changed one of my diamond painting channels, which was Miniatures Mayhem and More, which is how uh, this channel actually got um, its name. So I changed one of my Facebook dollhouse groups to Crafting Mayhem and More. So you guys come on over and take a look at the Facebook group and please join. Um, my miniature friends are going to have to make room for you guys because this is now my predominant hobby, but that's okay. That's okay. So I usually um, start out my whipping chat uh, with something um, it's along the lines for my dad update, right? And um, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to set a quick timer here so I won't go on and on. Uh, I'm not going to do that today because I think that there's really something a little bit more important um, that we need to talk about. Um, I, I've been feeling blah. So I have lately been calling myself the master procrastinator. I procrastinate about um, when I'm going to record a video. I have a day to record a video. I have a week to record a video. I have the time to record videos, and I'm going to give you an update as to how that happens. Um, yeah, I just can't or couldn't over the last few weeks seem to um, bring myself to do it. So let's go ahead and get in with that dad update because I think that this is kind of playing a role. Um, at this point, um, we all know that dad is home. We all know that um, his new normal is that um, he's not here. Um, he was diagnosed a couple years ago with um, early onset dementia, and it has probably become a predominant factor. He is, for the most part, immobile. As of late, um, you know, I could go, you know, I had to go with him to dialysis and other things to be able to transfer him to and from the wheelchair um, and all that kind of stuff. Well, my mom was able to get transportation, which means that I don't have to leave out of the house early as I'll get out in the morning to um, to be a part of that. So all I need to do is get him out to the transportation van that takes both he and my mom because he does not sit still and they don't want to monitor him and dialysis, which is kind of understandable. But um, every time I'm gone, you're not really doing anything. So, yeah, I, <laughs> but I get it. You, you haven't been and you don't want to. OK, got that part. So that's a plus. Um, he also gets therapy in home. Um during out the twice twice a week and um that's the physical therapy part the occupational therapist she is more interested in socializing and making friends and um than she is in actually doing the therapy but um she makes the comments that lets me know that what she's doing is charting 
um, to cover her ass. Uh, as a nurse, I know these things. Uh, but what you do while you're here is chit chat with the family. So um, that's a thing. Um, I'm not making that great of a deal, big deal out of it because his function is just declining and it's, this, that's what it is. So um, I don't know what to say about that. The latest thing, though, um, is that he has, I don't know if he is lucid at these points, or I don't know if this is a dementia type episode. Uh, the other day, Noelle was here because she had a half day. And I heard her screaming, grand, grand, you know, I'm taking a little nap because I get up at 4 a.m. And by noon, one o'clock, I want to take a little nap. So I jump up, grab my stuff to get dressed. And he's on the floor, kind of like he slid out of his wheelchair. But I think he was sliding, trying to squeeze himself between the wheelchair and the table to get up. So he, the way he's positioned is pretty much cutting off his windpipe. He's trying to call my mom, but because he can't get that much air, he can't say it loudly. And Noelle went down to fix herself some ramen noodles or something. And that's how she saw him. And she got me up. And so I got him up, which meant that I then had to um, get him up from dead weight status. And, you know, that's extremely hard. Um, we keep a gate belt on him to um, in case something happens so that it's easier to lift him up. So that was number one that day. Number two that day <laughs> is that Noelle had gone because she went to her um, tumbling class or something. And it was just me. And I decided I because my nap was interrupted that I was going to get up. You know, take another nap. I get up. He's sitting not in the kitchen in the wheelchair. He's sitting at the dining room table with. So he got up and walked over there. He took his shoes off because you can hear his shoes on the floor, but he took his shoes off. So he walked over there. This is a person who has to walk with the physical therapist who can't transfer himself, who can't bear weight, but he walked with his socks on, extremely dangerous, um, and I guess got to the dining room table and had to sit down. I come down the stairs because I know I'm about to doze off, and I just want to see where he's at, what what mindset he's in, if he needs something before I do this. <sighs> so my surprise, I ended up um, taking a picture you know, discussing it, which prompted a discussion amongst the family and what's needed and blah, blah, blah. And so at this point, I'm like, he needs a restraint vest. So we are in the process of getting that. Um, you know, my sister wants to know, you know, where, who's sitting here or who, who I'm not, ba I, that, no. He has access to a home health care person for a certain number of hours a day, a week. I don't know what it is, but I'm not it. I don't sit in that area. Not that I could not, but I get up early enough that I I have I want to take me a nap. OK, and I'm not going to stop because it you cannot predict his moments of lucidity versus, you know, when he's in his zombie like like state. So, uh, you know, I don't know what we're going to do about that. Um, the other thing is, is I think we don't talk enough about um, caregiver stress. And it seems like I've mentioned this before, but um, not only is my mom stressed, I'm freaking stressed, too, because it's. I have had to alter my lifestyle so drastically because he, at this point, definitely cannot be left alone. Um, so since I'm the one here getting unemployment through the winter is, is in my plan, um, 
I'm the one that's altering everything. And again, I think I've told you about my significant other, the fact that he is newly on dialysis because of a specific disease that um, is a genetic disease or um, that actually activated and it usually doesn't and only in one percent of the people who carry this and he also gets chemo to try to eradicate this specific protein that is being pr- produced by his body that actually damaged his kidneys in the first place so you know I can't be attentive to my significant other because I'm busy being attentive to my mom's significant other who happens to be my dad which is like issue um so you know I'm in the house and I don't have to be in the house and there are times when I could get up and go out but then I like this weekend I had the opportunity and I just did not have the energy I straight up did not have the energy to go now I have been recognizing that there is something going on with me mood mood wise. I don't want to say that um, I am depressed because I don't think I don't if depression had a feeling, I don't think I have it. I am not constantly thinking about my um, situation or feeling sad is um just those stressors. So um, as a part of trying to alleviate that, I have started doing things for myself. First of all, this Fat Girl Summit that happened this year is the last Fat Girl Summit for me. Um, doing those um, Bus Stop Chronicles, if you guys watched it, and trying to do a selfie, girl. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> Look like I, I'm a, a, a Buddha. And that's not how I look actually in real life to me when I'm looking in the mirror without a camera lens. So I cannot do that. So those two, 10 pounds that the camera allegedly adds, we going to um, decrease some of these so I look um, normal. Okay, that um, is an issue. I have also been, you know, I wear my hair in a ponytail. That's about all I can muster up. I'm not going anywhere. And if anybody knows about black hair care, um, protective hairstyles is a thing. And so I don't have a problem with that because um, I don't know if I've ever posted any pictures. But a few years ago, I turned... I don't know, 50 something. And I decided I wanted short hair. Yeah, that didn't work out for me. So now I'm in uh, this in between stage where my hair is growing back, but it has thinned considerably. um, And the fact that I did not have very thick hair in the first place is an issue. So I have been on this self-improvement journey where I am dieting to an extent I am a uh, waist training. <laughs> I have started my apple cider vinegar regimen and I am actually exercising. So this is this will be the first week. So I was doing a 14 day set, uh, challenge for myself. And as a part of this, um, what happens is, is that um, I am wearing my waist trainer eight hours a day. I take two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar a day. Um, I do um, a waist training exercise. Um, I do one in the morning, which is really a dance routine, which, whoo, Lord, child, it's not even that long. It's like two reps of the same moves and I can all, I just got to one half, <laughs> the first part of doing the second rep. So yeah, that's funny. So that's the one thing. So I have been doing it every day consistently. And if I don't get through that all the way, I will do another session in the evening. And then they have an abdominal waist training, which this fool crazy. His name is Mr. London. Mr. London and lost his man. He needs a, a, a ab training for the elderly. <laughs> I thought I was dying. I truly thought I was dying. I had to even to do this. Now, you know, you, I had the regular yoga mat that I've had for years back in the day. But I had to go uh, order uh, one of the two inch thick ones. Cause, wow, it, 
uh, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Anyway, so that is going okay. And, um, but for some reason, it just, I don't know if it's too much, too fast, if it's a combination of things. I don't know what it is, but I have been on super, super low battery. Yesterday, I was supposed to go somewhere. My friend called me um, saying that he was ready. And um, I couldn't. I was like, you know what? I just laid down and um, I didn't go. And now I'm feeling so guilty because I feel like I should have bit the bullet and went. But I didn't even feel like getting dressed. And so I slept off and on all day yesterday. Today, I am supposed to be going to an art gallery. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make it because <laughs> I don't feel like it. I just want to. I Actually, I do need to diamond paint. And that's just all I want to do. Um, this waist trainer is no joke. Um, I am going to follow through on it because I just bought me several different colors to match all of my Nikes and Pumas and whatever gym shoes I have. So at least I'll be fashionable <laughs> with that, with the, with the waist trainer on. So, and I bought, um, I think the one I have now is a large, extra large. So as I am able to cinch this tighter and tighter, I can move down to a medium and then eventually the small. So I bought them in a, you know, so I could size down. So um, I'm trying to do the right thing. And I did actually record a video last week. I just, I didn't, I was all over the place, kind of like now, <laughs> but just a little bit all over the place. And I couldn't, I didn't feel like it was right. So I did not post it and I, didn't feel that it was right to just post something for content only, um, just to have content up. At least I wanted to kind of have some substance to it and make it a little bit of enjoyable for somebody. I don't know. Anyway, I always talk about um, I do this channel because I like it. And because it's a way for me to release and then I'm sitting up here feeling some type of way and I'm not using the medium that I have as an outlet. And hell, maybe you guys have felt this way, like I'm off balance. I'm I want to cry, but I'm not a crybaby. So um, maybe I do just need a good cry, but I got to wait till nobody's home for that for they think. um I, I lost my man or something or I'm having a breakdown but um yeah I don't know what it is and uh, maybe it's because I am doing the whole um apple cider vinegar and it's working on the enzymes and the pH and the whatever and I'm changing my diet and all of that stuff maybe it's too much at once um you know I am postmenopausal maybe my hormones are not right I don't know I just know that um something something something's just not right and I gotta work that out um and I just thought that I need to be able to talk to you guys, not to mention the fact, I'm not going to skip over the fact that those exercises, my, my toenails was hurting you all. I have, I've done nothing with my toenails. The exercises don't force me to be new anywhere near my toenails, but that's how much pain I was in. Toenails hurt. It was bad. Yeah. Um, that's what happens. I guess when your, um, activity um, mine's being diamond painting consists of sitting on your ass, you know, uh, you don't move what you usually move. So I have been making a concentrated effort to get up, to move around, to stretch, to do whatever. And let me, let me just ask you all, listen, you can put it in the comments. Have you ever heard of vacuum ab exercises? 
whoever made that stuff up, I don't like you. I would say hate, but I got too much going on to put some negativity out in the universe. Know that I don't like you. Like if I ever meet you, I can't stand you off top. I, <laughs> okay, so I had to practice a good long time to figure out how to do these um, vacuum ab things because they were like, don't just suck your gut in. You got to imagine it. There's a string at the at your navel and that you're pulling. When I finally felt those very low abdominal muscles that they were talking about, Ooh, it snatched my soul, snatched my soul. It felt like I was snatching my soul to my back. And I only have to, um, I'm up to 10. Um, so I only have to take a deep breath, exhale, suck in those abdominal muscles and hold my arms up and twist. And they say do it 20 seconds and do it twice a day. I guess you could do it more. But I can't because you're holding your breath while you got your gut sucked in. So I'm up, I'm up to 10, which I think is a huge accomplishment considering that I am the most sedentary person ever. <laughs> so that's the thing. So I feel good about that. I feel good that I am following through on the exercises and I feel good that I am doing it. I'm actually going to get my hair done in the next um, week and a half or so. So I will be putting myself on camera with my hair done. Yes, ma'am. Just call my daughter to tell her to um, make my appointment and all that stuff. So that is a cool thing. So self-care, which I have not done in a long time, is a thing. I really want to go get... Um, one of those um, stretch massages where you're just stretching you, stretching your body. I think that might help with the exercise. So I will consider setting up an appointment for that um, next week, for next week. So I'll, I'll probably um, check out the, uh, the massage uh place and see if they have an opening for next week and get that done so I, I feel like by next week it'll be the second week doing those exercises um I should like be get more intense with it and so I think a good stretch would help me in that department waist trainers okay so I I, I can't say that I never had an hourglass figure. I'm pretty sure I did have an art, uh, hourglass figure. As a matter of fact, I know I did. Why I let it get away, I don't know. Um, but these waist trainers are new punk. And keeping them on for eight hours, I've actually been using the sweat kind. And I can see a difference. And I just started like consistently using them like every day for eight hours. Um, I started on Monday. It is Sunday, and actually today, I took it off and really to take a good look. I have not measured. I will not measure um, until next Monday. So um, every 14 days is when I'll do an official check-in with measuring my waist. I started out at 36 and a half, and um, we got another week to go to see where I am going to end up in 14 days and then I'll start increasing my routine. So I think I'm headed in a good place. I just I just don't feel like me and there's a little shaky in my voice. Um, I don't know what to do. I just figure don't hold it in get it out there and talk to somebody <laughs> about it. And guess what, Tag? You're it. You're, you are, it's you. You're the somebody that I'm going to talk to. All right. So I think I went over um, daddy update because I, I want to get out of this mood. So I'm going to move on. Um, I think I needed to update you guys on my daughter, um, Jackie, who had who moved to Houston, who had the um, roommate issue. I, I use the term roommates loosely as these roommates were um, insects, uh, homogeneous cockroaches. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
she finally got that rectified. They came to the conclusion that these creatures were coming from her neighbor upstairs. They moved her to um, another apartment building in its entirety. And she has been critter free for the, this will be the second week, I believe. We're coming at the end to the end of the second week she's been there. And according to her, she's been critter free. So that's a good thing. And they upgraded her to an additional bedroom because I think she had like a one bedroom. So they compensated her by giving her a two bedroom in a different building. So I thought that that was nice. I still don't like the length of time that it took them to do what they had to do but it's done and I have no complaints from her. And I think the only thing that I've had from her is the fact that um, she, what? Oh, she, she's had an abundance of job offers. So now she is trying to weed through which job should I take? And, you know, every five minutes is a question about, well, what would you do? And, you know. And, you know, the best advice I could give her is I, I take jobs. A um, salary is a is a thing, <laughs> but more than salary, especially if they're close together or something a little less than I would normally take. I look at the experience, the education, what I can learn from it and how it enhances my resume, because if I don't like it, I don't have to stay. But if that is the case, I want to have a takeaway that will put me in a better position. So I told her that's how she should determine, you know, which job she wants to take and, and what it will offer her experience wise. So I think she has come to the conclusion of which one she's going to take. And um, congratulations to her. That is Jackie. I call her Ja. Ja, ja. you'll hear me call them multiple names, <laughs> number one, number two, or number three. Um, that's that with Jackie. My other daughter, Kendria, oh, poor baby. So she went to, from the Gary School District in Indiana to the Chicago Public School District, and she hates it at Chicago Public Schools. Um, I hate to use this term, but they really have put her in the hood. And um, although I'm familiar with that neighborhood, my kids have grown up suburbanites and um, yeah, she's not liking it. So I think she's going to leave the Chicago public school system because they went in with some promises like this is what you're going to have, this, this and that and whatever. So she did do that. And um, with those promises, uh, but now they've added two extra schools to the, the one school she does speech therapy in. And both of those are what we call the low end um, of the South side. <laughs> um, and yeah, she, she not ready. And I don't want her there either. Plus it's traffic and travel, not that much, but you know, she might as well go in the opposite direction of traffic and head to Indiana um, which is probably the same distance away as she is going to these schools in the city. So that being, oh, and her car, car you know, her car is paid for. Um, she religiously gets her um, oil changed. Now something came up with her car and come to find out that she's fresh out of her warranty or whatever. And um, it's a known problem with her brand of car. Um, the, the dealership told her to call the corporate office to see what can be done. And I told her to do that because if they end up replacing her engine, then, um, you know, because this problem happened with her car after the period that they had predetermined, but it's the same issue. So please, I told her they probably weren't supposed to tell you to call the corporate and, so they probably tell it to some people and the fact that a, a, a lot of people probably don't. So if you call, if you present your case, maybe they will have something because if you get a new engine, you pretty much got a new car and it's paid for and you can ride around for 10 more years, you know, not that she will, but <laughs> you know, who wants a car note? I, I'm about that life. I don't have a car note. I don't want a car note. Um, 
yeah, I I will be holding um because <laughs> it's life. If you have never had a car note, had a car and not a car note, and it's reliable, good God, it is a uh, it's the life. It is life that you don't have to pay that. So if I get a new car, it is going to be paid for in cash um, because I have the car note money saved up. And or I will have a year's worth of car note. Believe you me, I will never have a three, four, whatever year car note ever again, ever. So um, that's Kendria's life. Who else do I have? I have. Oh, I think I forgot to mention because this is fairly new. Um, my dad has just uh, developed a couple skin tears or pressure ulcers, or I don't know how he has gotten them. I have not seen them. That's on my mama to look at. And um, also, he has a nurse that comes, so she will be looking, staging. Um, we'll be getting some duoderm, polymem, whatever it is. But we also bought him a programmable um, alternating air cushion for his wheelchair. So uh, hopefully that will alle alleviate any potential problems and rectify whatever he has going on now. So um, I honestly... Um, did not tell you that I have my usual setup, my A2 pad that will be in the description. I am using my go-to pen, which is from Poshy Pens, Nicole. Um, love my pen, love my steel tips. Uh, what else am I using? Oh, wait, I got a new pen from Nicole. Yes, I got a new pen from Nicole the other day. Look, y'all, look. It is beautiful. It is like little paper waxy tips. I don't know if you can see it up in there or if it's going to focus good enough. But this pen is the bomb. And she gave me a steel tip for free. So loving my Nicole and everything that she brings to the table. So I will probably put this in the rotation as soon as I put some... Um, glue dots in now what i did do is buy some micro glue dots now i've been using regular glue dots and they have been working just fine now the sticky on this been giving me a little problem and everybody talks about oh you got to use the micro the micro i got it we'll see what happens um i'll change in between the two to see what's going on but i love the glue, dot, glue dots and i love the glue dots in these steel tips life game changer game over i'm not doing anything else i am finally using um one of these containers <laughs> because i did it okay i talked about myself being a procrastinator but my goal was to get trying to dreams kitted up it is kitted up and i use one and one whole con one of those containers plus this container that I have now but since I had extra room and this is a gift that I want to give somebody I ended up kitting this up in there at the same time so yeah I'll be working on those two then surprise of all surprises I got my surprise thing project that you guys I can't tell you that's killing me not to tell you I got that in so I actually need to start on that so that can become a thing and we can talk about it and I can tell you but that I can't tell you as of yet so I have to get that I don't even have to get it kitted up because it's in baggies but I need to really 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 get started on it because I'm hoping that I could reveal that next month and that you guys will like it and you might even want to partake in some of that surprise that I can't tell you about. Um, what else? So I told you about my waist training. Um, the Bus Stop Chronicles. <laughs> okay, so the Bus Stop Chronicles, um, Noel goes to school from my home. Um, and for the most part, um, 
I will be walking her to the bus stop because she likes to walk to the bus stop. I don't get any exercise, so that fits right into the program. We will see how that works out in the wintertime because of snow and such. Hopefully, this won't be a very wet or snowy winter. But in any case, we're going to keep that up. I'm going to keep it going as long as we see wildlife and uh, she and I have something substantive to talk about on the way from the bus stop. And uh, maybe you'll get some winter laughs like me slipping on the ice, me running from an animal, um, us racing home, whatever it is that Noel and I decide to do um, as long as it's entertaining. Um, I was considering doing it um every morning evening afternoon kind of thing but I'm not I'm gonna kind of condense a week's worth of stuff into a vlog which is gonna make me edit which is the problem because again I was so out of it um these last couple of weeks, I just did not have the motivation to get started, but ain't none to it but to do it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to keep on plowing through, even if I have a small absence, till I figure out exactly what's going on. I am not a medication person. I don't care what's going on. Um, I have to be in some serious pain to get me some pain meds. So I, I can't say Hopefully this talk with you guys will um, enlighten me um, as far as what may or may not be going on and what a course of action would be if there is something that needs to be done outside of talking to you guys. But I, I'm hoping that this little chit chat <laughs> will get me where I need to be. Um, another thing, I'm so glad that Miss Gracie May mentioned her events because I do, um, I'm looking forward to them. I was supposed to be participating in the, um, breast cancer awareness event that is by Angie's Diamonds. And I have not got my kit. I bought my first kit from Uniquely Down Unders. If it comes, I will kit it up. I will try to be get started on it, at least to participate in the event, to watch a couple of the vids and comment on it and give my two cents if there are two to be given um, and do what I said in support of breast cancer awareness, but I really want to work on that particular kit. So if not, it'll come later, maybe during um, breast cancer awareness month, but back to the story at hand, which is Gracie Mays events. So it's so appropriate that um, she and Abigail Marie 007 <laughs> will be doing the mental health awareness um event. I think that event is going to happen in February, which is not Mental Health Awareness Month, but guess what? It comes after the holidays. And a lot of people go through some depressive times, okay, during the holidays and you know, um oh, way to put it on the wrong letter, Kina some depressive events during the holidays. So I think um, it's very appropriate. I'm glad that they're doing it. And kudos to those two. I cannot wait to be a part of it. And yeah, that part. Um, and now that I'm feeling some type of way, <laughs> then I'm really, really glad to get, be involved in it because maybe it'll help me too. Um, that way I'll research it. That way I will analyze my signs and symptoms and maybe we can move on from this. Um, so that's mental health awareness and it is hashtag reach out 2022. That will happen in February. The next one, hey, is me. And that is all about diversity and it's specifically in the diamond painting industry because I don't know about you or you know, anybody else, but I do know about me. When I hear about a new company, um, I go on the website. It's something that I see that I like, but one of the first things I find myself 
doing is looking for diamond paintings that look like me. And the issue that I have is not that there are not people of color, but the people of color, if they even have them, are in reference to a specific culture. And if I am a black woman living, born, raised, living in America. And I, if I have an African heritage, I don't know what it is. I'm, of course, I do have an African heritage. I just don't know what it is. So to um, look at the various cloths, let's say a kente cloth, not every region in Africa uses kente. So I, if I'm not from a region and I would know that uses Kente, why would I want to get anybody in Kente? You, you see what I'm saying? So for me, I need a reflection of black in America. And as much as um, Afros are in style and I wish I could wear one, but my hair is not thick enough and it never was even when I was a kid in the 70s young enough to wear an afro yeah i couldn't get one <laughs> so if i could rest assured i would and i have thought about an afro wig but guess what um that's not it either because i don't have a relaxer in my hair i just have straight hair when i wet it it's curly when i blow dry it out it's straight even if i wet it and if i put it in two ponytails and oil my scalp and oh, the, at the end of the week, it would be straight. So I need to see what I know as far as black people go. So I'm so glad she's doing this. And I'm sure it's the same if you're Hispanic, if you're Asian, if you're Indian, if you're Native American, um, because, you know, they and that kills me too. They post all these Native American pictures and I don't know when last time you all seen a real live Native American but they done lighten that race up uh, of people up quite significantly I don't see them with the use that I see them or saw them with in um in older pictures uh of pictures when I was a child uh they were some colored people you know, why they called them red skin right yeah I don't see a lot of red skinned people um representing the Native Americans today I got my own theory on that but we could say that for DP diversity and DP diversity 2022 with myself and Gracie May Diamond Paint with Grace will be in April of next year and then we have the boys. Uh, there will be a prostate cancer awareness uh, with Grace and cre the creative Chris, Christopher Colossus and Diamond Painting Dog Dad, who is Rob. And I, I you know, that's a big thing. Um, my cousin, my same age, he has um, prostate cancer. <laughs> so um, and he went through chemo and it spread to this and it spread to that. And now he's back getting some radiation because they found it somewhere else in his body. So very important topics some things that we need to talk to the men in our lives about and um, very educational for the men at Diamond Paint. The hashtag for this one that I don't know if it's going to stay the same, but it's right now. Hashtag no taboo prostate blue. So hashtag no taboo, prostate blue, and that will be her third. I don't know if it'll be her final, but her third one in her um, event series. So it's going to be interesting to say the least. I cannot wait to um, see the guys all together and having their discussion and actually hearing about that kind of thing from guys because, you know, guys are guys and guys don't necessarily um think about self-care or what might be or that preventative stuff um but that's not just singling out guys because i'm so guilty and i think it's more about being um in the healthcare field and you kind of gloss over your own stuff even though you know better you know do what i do not do what i say not as i do kind of thing um 
versus what what could be. So in any event, all three of those um, events will be coming up in 2022. I can't wait. I hope you guys can't wait. Um, Grace and I have discussed some of the things that we want to highlight. Um, no room for people to be offended. It is going to be strictly um, our opinions as we are giving them. You don't have to agree. We don't have to have the same opinion. That's a good part about being a human, an uh, educated and intellectual human. You can agree to disagree. Um, if you don't like what's said, then express yourself without name calling because the worst thing in the world for me is somebody who um, tries to come at you but the first thing you do when you can't quantify or qualify what you say with an educated response and you start name calling, we won't be having any of that because while um, I can hold my own in that re arena and that's what I, how I would re prefer to communicate, uh, we can't act like we on the block. Uh, we don't want to do that because you're going to be like, what, what? Uh-huh. Mouth is dangerous. Anyway, I actually do feel better um, in talking and getting this out. Um, I'm glad that I have you guys to um, talk. To Ooh, let me. T I'm just going to interrupt myself for one second. The Bus Stop Chronicles. Do you guys remember back in the day? When you lived on the block, at least we did um, for our single family homes with starter homes and families and everybody knew each other. Girl, <laughs> yeah, I was at the bus stop with Noel. A lady across the street was on the opposite corner. Her son got off the bus. She asked me, oh, did she rise the bus? I didn't realize anybody else rides the bus. I said, well, she just... They just got the bus scheduled together. So, yes, she rides the bus. She um, usually, um, you know, they told us that the bus is here this time. It got here at this time. So we just stay here and wait until the bus comes. And she was like, oh, OK. And so we get to walk. Y'all, why did we get to the block? And she is the next door neighbor. Next I'm not talking two houses that and we live in a cul-de-sac. So it's one, two, one, two, three, four, five houses on this block because it's a cul-de-sac. And we're like in the middle of the cul-de-sac. Embarrassed. Like what happened to being neighborly? It's like the shame of it all. Like they live right next door. Embarrassed. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So uh, I brought that up to say, be neighborly. If you have neighbors, say hello. Find out who they are, what their names are, <laughs> all of that type of good stuff. Um, yes, I, I could go on a little more about um, me being in my feelings or my emotions or whatever it is. But I think just relating and releasing um, in this whipping chat has fired off some endorphins. So I'm feeling a hundred percent better. I wanted this to be an hour, but, um, I think I'm like at 15 more minutes to go or something like that. I am feeling good. So I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to grab me a quick bite to eat because I didn't eat breakfast earlier and order me some salads from Aldi because guess what? Instacart. Now does Aldi and Instacart does Walgreens and Instacart does Dollar Tree. I'm done. I never have to leave the house again. See, that's where I got my stuff. Never have to leave the house again. Anyway, that being said, um, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, please leave some comments, especially to this video, just because I can use the cheering up and um, maybe it'll help me forge a, a friendship with somebody who's been there, done that. And I want to wish you guys a happy next week. <laughs> Have a great upcoming week. I will go get back to my regular 
regularly scheduled videos. See, that's when you know it's time to go. So I will try, I will have a video up on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as I have been doing. And um, everybody enjoy your Sunday. Relax, get you some rest and get ready for the new week. Bye-bye. Thank you.